Rad scorpions are a common creature you may have seen roaming the wasteland, either alone or with several others. You may have also noticed their large size, or perhaps you heard them first, either scurrying to attack or emerging from the earth. Either way, we can all agree that hearing this sound is cause for concern. But why are they so large? Where did they come from? And what uses do humans have for these oversized arachnids? The most common rad scorpion encountered in the wasteland is the Emperor Scorpion. No longer six inches long as they were before the war, now the size of a fusion flea, and sometimes even larger than that. According to the Fallout Bible, their size is the result of both radiation and FEV that leaked into the atmosphere after the West Tech Research Facility in Southern California was targeted by an enemy warhead. The scorpions then grew over time, breeding and spreading to the other areas of the United States. It is down to their high tolerance for a variety of conditions that they have been able to survive and thrive in new environments, ranging from the arid deserts of Nevada to the breezy coastlines of the Commonwealth. But they also happily live among the ruins of the capital wasteland and highly irradiated grounds such as the glowing sea. In the beginning, their ability to burrow below ground is what helped the Emperor Scorpion to hide from prey, that was until they grew exponentially, and now they only ever hide to hunt. With the telltale signs of their presence, a few sounds or sudden emergence giving away their location, which is still difficult to pinpoint for the untrained eye due to their appearance. Their exoskeleton comes in a variety of colours, helping them to blend in, going from pale grey to blue, black, red, or even white through a lack of carapace pigment. These albino rad scorpions are the most visible, yet they have grown to become one of the strongest and most dangerous scorpions, only shadowed by the stalkers, predators, and death skulls. They are capable of fending off an attack from apex predators, such as death claws. Originally, they were native to West Africa, but were swiftly imported stateside and bred for their popularity as pets. The once docile creature, contained in glass cages for human enjoyment, was freed during the Great War, with nuclear blasts shattering doors, windows, and their enclosures, allowing them to escape captivity into the freshly destroyed streets, where radiation and mutated FEV transformed them from pets into predators. Before their gigantic transformation, they would have consumed moths, mealworms and other insects of that nature, but now they seem more interested in consuming humans, livestock and anything else that makes a sizable meal, including other scorpions. To help them hunt, they travel in packs and use a venomous stinger to strike their target, puncturing and filling them with deadly venom. Before the war, this sting would have been similar to a bee sting, painful but not at all deadly, except for those with allergic reactions. But now, this once contained creature has evolved to produce a highly potent venom capable of taking down the largest of wasteland creatures, which is really strange. More often than not, when a venomous creature grows, their venom is diluted, not the other way around. This venom attacks the nervous system, reducing the afflicted's range of motion until they can no longer move and are left with no other choice but to be eaten alive. Fortunately for us humans, wasteland doctors such as Raslo in Shady Sands have reverse engineered an antidote capable of counteracting this venom, a milky substance with floating pieces of rad scorpion flesh stored in a convenient little bottle. As deadly as this venom is, it does have its uses. Other than an anti-venom, it can also be used as a deadly weapon, with the tips of darts being submerged and then used to incapacitate enemies. Or it can be diluted and used as an ingredient in a variety of recipes, such as steaks, omelettes, rad scorpion en croute, or even rad scorpion tails in drawn butter, which when compared to the other wasteland meals, doesn't sound that bad. But getting the venom isn't all that easy. 
When encountered, rad scorpions are both aggressive and relentless. They very rarely give up chase or run away if injured. Their attack pattern is predictable, but that doesn't mean it isn't deadly. They first charge to their prey in a head-on attack, sting to incapacitate their target, and then follow that up with a barrage of savage strikes using their giant pincers, which usually delivers a killing blow. For most wastelanders, these pincers are the last thing they ever see, as their weapons, planks of wood, metal pipes, and crude excuses for what they call a firearm isn't enough to penetrate their thick exoskeletons. High-caliber weapons and explosives provide the best odds of walking away unscathed. Even crippling a limb and running away is sometimes the best option for the unprepared and inexperienced traveler. And this brings me to the other type of scorpion. These mutated striped bark scorpions have two distinct differences when compared to the Emperor. And this is their color, which is a mottled brown, and their size, which is significantly smaller. These bark scorpions are far less traveled than their emperor cousin, who stretches from coast to coast, whereas bark scorpions are only encountered in the southwest regions of North America, specifically Nevada and Arizona. They are well suited for their environment and have experienced the same radiation and maybe FEV-induced mutations as those previously mentioned. As such, they are much larger, faster, and deadlier than their pre-war ancestors. They hunt in the exact same way as the Emperors, charging head-on, striking, and delivering the killing blow with pincers. However, they do also try to flank their target, and sometimes even jump to close the distance before attacking. Their venom acts in a similar fashion, rendering the afflicted with dizziness, nausea, and damage to the internal organs, incapacitating large prey, including livestock, and even humans if not treated with anti-venom. They are social creatures, preferring to live and hunt in packs, and have been known to live peacefully alongside emperors, but they can also roam alone, although that is much rarer to see, but not as rare as what's next. A one-of-a-kind, completely unique, talking rad scorpion can be found at Broken Hills, genetically engineered by the Mad Professor, who claims to know how to mass-produce Mentats, the intelligence-increasing chem which has likely played a part in the scorpion's development. It has been extensively modified and has developed the ability to understand and even speak human language. It even plays chess, which is just as ridiculous as it is impressive. Just keep in mind that this scorpion doesn't like to lose. So, rad scorpions were once a popular pet, freed by the Great War, and transformed over time through radiation and mutated FEV. They have since grown into some of the wasteland's largest and deadliest creatures, with vile venom and powerful pincers capable of devastating other creatures, livestock, and even humans. Speaking of which, have used the venom to create antidotes, weapons, or even unique wasteland dishes. Rad scorpions typically live in packs, have no worries intermingling between species, and burrow below ground to surprise their prey. Their only giveaway being the dreaded shuffling of chitinous legs, or the sound of a spontaneous eruption as they emerge from the earth. Be sure to show your support by liking the video, and subscribing if you haven't already for more Fallout content. If there's anything you would like to see in a later video, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. With that said, thank you, as always, for watching, and I'll see you in the next adventure.